Hi, today uh, we're going to demonstrate a manual kernel installation. Uh, there's a right way and a wrong way, and I'm going to demonstrate both today. Um, so here I'm logged in through SSH on a system, uh, just to make things look a little nicer. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to uh, do a uname minus a to let us know what we're currently using. So we're using uh, 2632. Uh, 431. Uh, all right, so now now we know what's on the system uh, presently running. Let's look at what's currently installed on the system. So we can do a uh, yum list installed prep kernel. This is this is pretty much the easiest way to remember doing this. All right, so we can see here that the packages installed are 2632.431. It's mainly the only kernel installed on the system. Um, so I have a copy of my uh, Red Hat installation DVD. Um, this system's actively receiving updates. So we have a newer kernel on the system. Um, let's say we're in a situation where uh, same principle applies. We're going to install a newer kernel or a custom kernel. Uh, so I'm in the, uh, the DVD uh, path. So right now we're in media rail 6u4 uh, packages. Uh, so if we do an ls kernel star dot rpm, uh, we have kernel 2632.358. So the wrong way to install this, uh, let, let's go through this first, would be rpm dash IBH and executing with a force. Um, but first we're going to do just RPM IBH and, and let's see what happens. So let's copy this. Let's paste. All right, now the package is already installed, but it's actually lying to us. It isn't installed. This package isn't set up on the system. Okay, so next instinct is going to be, if it doesn't work the first time, uh, we'll force it. Because we know better than the system, right? So let's do a force and see what happens. All right, now it's telling us uh, the kernel's installing. It looks like it's installing. It's taking the right amount of time to install. So just give it a minute here and we'll see where we're at. All right, so let's cut out a boot grub menu. Now 2632358 is in the menu here. Most of the time, if you install a kernel with RPM, you won't make it this far. The scripts don't actually tend to do the, uh, the grubby part of the install. Uh, so um, let's do a yum list installed grub kernel. And now you'll notice something here too. Um, if you install with RPM, it'll say that the source repo was installed. So you'll, you can tell which method somebody installed it. So we're going to do RPM e kernel 2632.358. Copy, paste. And let's rerun that and see if we have it installed. Okay, now 358 is uninstalled. Now let's see how it looks different if we do a yum local install. And this is the right way. Yum local install, kernel 2. All right, we're going to hit yes, do the install. You can also put a minus Y, and it won't ask you to do the install. If you have a lot of systems to update, um, that's the way to go.
Now keep in mind that yum is the package maintainer. Now RPM is just a packager. So if you're going to do installs, it's really best to use yum local install. So now let's see how it looks different in the uh, package database. So if you install it with yum local install, you'll see that it uses the package name as the repo name. And that's, that's important because if we scroll back here, uh, if it lets me, um, all right, I can't, I can't scroll back, but if you roll back in the video, um, you'll see that it just says installed. Um, and that, that lets you know that RPM installed it. Um, now if we cat out boot grub menu, we have our 358 kernel in there and, and guarantee it'll boot. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, now, if you needed to remove it, uh, same principle applies. Uh, you want to do yum remove, um, to make sure that the right scripts are running. Um, RPM E will also do it, but it's better to use yum when you can. And you want to do the package name, leave the architecture out or no arch, um, and then just put a dash and cut and paste the, uh, the release. Now, if you do yum remove kernel, it will remove all versions and all architectures of package name kernel. So you don't want to do that either. So just be careful when you're in here. So this will clean up any old, uh, kernels that you might have installed that have been driving you nuts or you just want to clean the system up. And if you do make a mistake, it's okay. Um, usually a running system will stay running until you actually post the system again. So if you have to, just reinstall the package. You're in the clear. Just don't reboot the system. Um, so this brings us back to, uh, to where we were when we started. But we've successfully installed and removed the kernel. And uh, that's what I was looking to show you today. Uh, thanks.